QuickBooks Online 2024 Statement of Cash Flows. Get ready and some coffee because QuickBooks is even quicker to the trigger than Quick Draw McGraw. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left hand side. We're in the favorites. We're going to be right clicking on the balance sheet. Open link in new tab. Right clicking on the profit and loss. Once again, opening the link in a new tab. Go into that middle tab, closing up the hamburger. This is our balance sheet report. Let's do a range change up top, bringing it back to 2023. 010123 tab, 123 tab, running it to refreshing it. Tabbing to the right, closing up the hamburger. We're going to do once again a range change back to 03. 010123 tab, 123 tab, run it. That's the setup process we do every time. We're now going to be looking at the statement of cash flows, the third major financial statement report, but not one that's quite as important or one that we look at every time we do transactions. Let's open it up first and then we'll talk about that more. Going back to the first tab again, we're looking for the statement of cash flows. Let's just type it in here. Statement of cash flows. There it is. I'm going to open that one up. And let's go ahead and duplicate the tab. I'll right click and duplicate the tab so I can pull this one to the right. That's the one that we're going to be working on. And we still have that first tab if we want to do some uh, data input. Back to the tab to the right. Closing up the hamburger. Let's do one more time on the range change. Bringing it back to 010123 tab, 123 tab. Running it to refresh it. So... The statement of cash flows, although it's the third major financial statement report, when you think of financial statement reports, we should be thinking the uh, balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows. However, we haven't opened the statement of cash flows every time we do a data input, and that's because basically when we enter any of the forms that we create journal entries with, invoices, uh, the sales receipt, expense form, bills, and so on and so forth, those we think of as having a transaction that affects at least two accounts to general ledger accounts, which will be reported somewhere on the balance sheet and the income statement. And so that's why we look at the balance sheet and the income statement to see the impact of the transactions. That is primarily and most directly what, are we, what we are creating when we do the data input. And then the statement of cash flows, we kind of think of it as if you were to build it, for example, from scratch, uh, then you would build the balance sheet income statement and then the statement of cash flows basically from the balance sheet and the income statement. So next question, why is that? Why do we build it that way? What is the statement of cash flows doing for us that is different than the balance sheet and the income statement? Well, first you can kind of think about the statement of cash flows as though it still fits into our general rule as of all other reports other than the balance sheet and the income statement give us more information about the balance sheet and income statement because this is basically giving us more information you could think about as cash. The bottom line here should tie into the cash account, which we'll take a look at shortly. Uh, but really the statement of cash flows is kind of reworking mainly the income statement 
on a cash flow basis. And the reason we would need that is that most of the times our financial statements are on an accrual type basis. So if I go to the income statement, then for example, when we think about these different uh, types of revenue recognition or these different types of accounting uh, methods, cash versus accrual, for example, it's not just the toggle between this little key up top. And you can't really just pick if you're going to be on a cash or accrual basis. It'll depend in part on the industry that you are in. It has to do with timing of the income and expenses. When are we recording income expenses? Uh, on a cash basis, you record the income and expenses when you get the cash on income and when you pay the cash on expenses on an accrual basis you record the income and expenses when you incur the the income and the expenses when you consume the expenses now you 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 might think well why can't i just pick one well in practice it really basically depends on the industry that you are in and you could think about being on a cash or accrual basis depending or by cycle basically vendor cycle or expense cycle and the customer cycle or the revenue cycle and if you just basically for example on the expense cycle if you are just using the cash uh, the bank feeds to record the cash outflows as expenses as they come through the bank feeds then you're basically already on a cash based system because and and you wouldn't you would just do that if that would be the simplest thing to do and you would be using a cash based system if on the other hand you're entering bills now you have an accounts payable involved and that's an accrual account so now you're doing an accrual type of thing if you're tracking inventory then you're also going to have to track inventory on the books as an asset even though you paid cash for it so that's another generally accrual uh, type of account if you go to the revenue side of things if you're just recording revenue as it comes through the bank feeds with a deposit form uh, such as you might do in gig work or something like that, then you're basically on a cash based system. But if you have to invoice people, now you're doing something that has a uh, an, an accounts receivable, which is an accrual type of account, and you'll have to deal with the accrual component of it. So when you look at your balance sheet, then note that the accounts that are are accrual accounts accounts receivable is basically an accrual account inventory generally has a, an accrual component to it uh, even the the fixed assets are have an, accru an accrual component and accounts payable has an accrual component uh, to it so that kind of distorts our revenue recognition from a cash based system on the income statement our performance statement to an accrual performance statement which is usually good for comparative purposes and let me just the main example of that is if you look at the furniture and equipment, which is something, or the fixed assets, which could include furniture and equipment, this is something that basically you have to still have an accrual component, even if you're on a cash-based system, because the, gov the, the IRS, if you're in the United States, will require it. So even if you're on a cash system for everything else, you're still going to have to, if you have equipment and furniture, do this accrual thing of recording the fixed assets and depreciating them. And you can imagine that if you didn't, weren't forced to do that, what would happen if you bought like a building of $100,000 for cash and you just expensed it because you paid the cash on a cash-based system, that's what you would do. That would mean you would have this huge loss in the year or month that you purchased it, which would look like from a performance statement, you did very poorly in that year or month. But really you didn't because you're going to use the building for like 30 years into the future. So what we need to do for comparative purposes is the accrual process of putting it on the books as an asset uh, and then depreciating it over the useful life and so on. Uh, obviously with, a, with accounts receivable, we have to have an accrual component if you need to track accounts receivable because you're going to have to try to see if you can collect on the accounts receivable. So that's going to be necessary depending on the type of industry however we still would like to have a cash uh, system a cash based statement because cash is the lifeblood of the company so we would like to even if we have an accrual income statement which is great for comparative purposes still have a cash flow statement so that we could still say see the cash flow so that means we're going to convert in essence the income statement mainly to instead of an, an accrual component 
to a, a cached uh, base component. Now you might say, hey, why can't I just, what you could try to do is just toggle this thing over, which should make, make it to a cached base system. And that's one method that you could try to do just to kind of get an idea of a cached versus accrual based system. It's not going to come out exact because of the rules of the statement of cash flows, but that 187012 should be, you would think, the operating 1896.02. So it's pretty close, right, if you were just to use that method. Uh, but uh, we're, we're going to have the whole different statement of cash flows here. We have a course on creating, I mean, uh, the statement of cash flows. And if you're able to, to create the statement of cash flows from a profit and loss and balance sheet, then you're really understanding the accrual system. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a good working tool. All right, let's get into the statement of cash flows. It's a timing statement from, uh, so that means it has a range, unlike the balance sheet, more like the income statement uh, type of report. So we're, we're measuring performance in essence on a cash based system. We're gonna have three components to it. If I uh, minimize the triangles, We've got the operating activities, we've got the investing activities and the financing activities. The largest part is generally the operating activities because it's gonna tie out in essence to the income statement. You can kind of think of the income statement being reworked to then uh, make it on a cash-based system instead of an accrual-based system, which would mean in essence, instead of getting the money when the or re recording revenue when the invoice happened, let's go back to my flowchart. If you if you have invoices, then the cash based system is going to like remove the invoice part and basically recognize revenue when you get the payment. Right. And on the bill side, it's going to remove, in essence, the bills and recognize the expense when uh, you made the payment, when, when the cash is going out. That's, in essence, what the idea would be. However, there's two formats that you can do that in uh, the direct method and the indirect method. So you would think then that you would just take the income statement here and just rework it just like we did here going from a cash to an accrual system so that now I have income and expenses recognized on a cash uh, based system. This would be like a direct method having a, just a normal income statement, but now, now it's on a cash based system. But uh, usually you still have to do the indirect method when we do the statement of cash flows, which is what the, the uh, QuickBooks has here, which means you're gonna start with net income and back into it. One reason for that is that you get this reconciliation between net income from a cash-based system and an accrual-based system. We'll dig into that in a second. Then you've got the investing activities. These are uh, cash flow related items from an investing side of things, which typically doesn't just refer to the investment in stocks and bonds, but investment in assets such as the uh, property, plant, and equipment. The financing activities has to do with financing, the flows of financing, such as loans and whatnot, payments of loans, taking out of loans, as well as the uh, equity financing, owners putting money into the company, owners taking money out of the company in the form of draws if it was a sole proprietorship or partnership, and dividends if it's a corporation. That gives us our net increase uh, for cash. And let me pull out the trusty calculator. And so we could say, okay, if we had those categories, 18196.02 minus 13495 plus 15662.5 is the 4036.52. That should tie out then uh, to that's that's the change and there was no beginning balance here if there was a beginning balance we we would adjust for the beginning balance which would get us to the ending balance but there is no beginning balance so that's the cash so that should tie out to what's on the balance sheet over here here's the balance sheet let me make my calculator stick so this is where it gets a little tricky with the balance sheet because you would think hey wait that doesn't tie out it's 2001 but the undeposited funds is actually also cash which should be up here in the bank accounts, but it's not because QuickBooks wants to put it in other current assets because it acts more like another current assets in terms of functionality of the account because it doesn't connect to the bank feeds or anything. So if there's something in undeposited funds, you got to remember to pick that up. 2062.52 plus 2001. That gives us the 4063.52 
which ties out to our statement of cash flows uh, here. Okay, let's take it one section at a time, operating activities. So like I say, you would think it would start with net income, but net income on a cash basis, and then all the expenses on a cash basis. Because I just said, like the operating income is kind of like the income statement, but we flipped it to a cash based system. But now if I look down here, I have all these balance sheet accounts. If the operating activities of the statement of cash flows is like the income statement, why does it have all these balance sheet accounts instead of income statement accounts in it? Because we're using the indirect method and the indirect method is going to start at the bottom line of the income statement, net income. So you can see here, if I go back to the income statement, accrual, it starts at the bottom line, 167646 of the net income and then it backs out all of the accrual things. The easiest way to back out of the accrual things is actually to look at the balance sheet for the accrual type of accounts, the accounts that have an accrual component to them, basically taking the difference between all balance sheet accounts. So that's what's happening. If I go to my balance sheet here and I, and I run this from two, let's run a comparative report for the previous period and look at the dollar change and then I'll run it. So the previous period had nothing in it, which is kind of lame for our purposes here, but whatever. So you could see if I went everything, the idea, the concept would be is I'm going to take the difference between all of the balance sheet accounts except cash because cash is going to be the bottom line. And if I look at all of the changes of all of these accounts, then the difference has to tie out to the difference in the cash accounts. And that's based, so we're just going down the line. AR started with, with this, and then this was it last year. The difference is 528152. So we're going to take that difference and reduce the net income from it because, again, AR, all of these, all of these accounts are going to be basically a cruel type of account. So we have to reverse it out, in essence. And you can get in and start thinking about, well, why is it a negative if it, uh, if it went up, then we're going to reduce it because it's an asset. I won't get into the details on that. If you want to dive into that in more detail, we have a whole course on it. It's really an interesting thing, but you can go through each of these ones. Here's the accounts payable. And we took the difference in the accounts payable, reduced it, the credit card, the property taxes, and uh, the loan payable. The loan payable, you would think possibly should be down here in the financing activities. And I think the reason it's not is because it, it's under other current liabilities and all the stuff in current liabilities, I think they put into up, up top here. So I don't think that's exactly right. I think that's done because of the default settings of, of the system putting it up up top here. But in any case, that gives us the, uh, the net cash provided by operating activities. Now, the other thing with this form that's a little bit wonky, a little bit strange, oftentimes when you have to create these things is that you have to change the language down here, whether it be an increase or a decrease. So down here you have a decrease and it still says net cash provided by. Well, you didn't provide it by right now because this was net cash used in. So you would think this would be a, the language would change here. It doesn't in QuickBooks because it's just keeping the same language, whether it's an increase or decrease, not a big deal. But when I was working in accounting firms, they used to grill me on that all the time. You didn't change the, you didn't change the word here. So you might then, which is fine. They were right. I didn't change the word, <laughs> but, but you might want to, you might want to ex you could export it to Excel and then you could change the word, uh, there. Uh, to to say it was a decrease if it was a negative. But in any case, I digress. There's the first one, investing activities. So the investing activities is usually, again, not stocks and bonds, although possibly it could be, but rather investments from a different perspective in terms of what we're investing in to help us generate revenue. That's usually going to be the fixed assets. Why is that an investment? Because we're putting money into the long-term assets that we're going to use to help us generate revenue, you know, in the future is the general idea. So the money, so money that went into the fixed assets. And then when we sell the fixed assets, they're usually going to go here. You might ask, well, why aren't they on the income statement? Well, and one way you can think about that 
which means it would be up in the operating activities. You can think about, well, what's the other side of the transaction on the balance sheet? If it's an income statement transaction, then you would think it would be in the operating activities. If it's not, you would think it would be somewhere else investing or financing. So for equipment, for example, if I bought equipment with cash, then the cash would be affected and the other side of the transaction would be equipment. There's no uh, expense account that is impacted. There will be an expense account when we depreciate it. And if we had any depreciation, it would be up here in the operating activities. So that means there's cash flow happening here that I have to account for because I need to tie into my change in cash flow, but it wasn't cash flow that was related to revenue and expenses, rather cash flow related to purchases of equipment, which we're thinking of in terms of an investment in this case, because we bought the equipment in order to help us generate revenue in the future. Okay, let's go to the financing activities. We've got the notes payable. So they've got the long-term portion of the note down here. So it looks to me like we're just populating the categories down here based on whether it's a current assets or long-term uh, asset. The long-term or liability, sorry, current liability or long-term liability. They put the current portion up here. I don't think that's right, but they just put all the current portions up there, it looks like is the idea. And then the long-terms are being dumped down here into financing uh, activities. So anytime we take out the loan, that would be a, a, a financing activity. And anytime when we when we pay off the loan and whatnot, financing activity, you can think of the same concept. Is the income statement affected when we take out the loan? No, because we bought the loan, we got the loan, we got cash went up, and the other side went to uh, went to the the loan, no, no expense account, when our expense accounts impacted, when we make payments, there will be expenses, but that'll be interest expense. And if we had interest expense, it would be up here on the uh, income statement or operating activities uh, section. And then if we took draws out, like or owner investments would also be down here. So if it was a uh, corporation, uh, if if we issued stock, and we got money in from from the owners, through the selling of stocks, then that would be included. Uh, if we if we uh, gave money back in the corporation in the form of dividends, then that possibly would be in the financing activities. And then if it was a sole proprietorship, if we the owner put money into the business, you would think that would be in financing. And if we take the money out in the form of draws, in that case, you would think that would be in the financing. So it looks like the accounts that are going to be kind of dumped in here for QuickBooks will be the long-term liability accounts and the uh, equity accounts, you would think. So operating equity looks funny, of course, or opening balance because that's kind of a, an account that shouldn't really be there because it's really like a starting account that's kind of ugly and should be removed. But this is the net cash provided by financing activities, and that gives us the net cash increase for the period. And then usually you would compare that to the prior period cash to get to the ending cash because this is the change in cash and if you want to tie out to the balance sheet you don't want the change in cash you want the ending cash so then you would you would take that and compare it to the the beginning balance of cash to look at to get to the ending balance of cash right that would be the general idea if, if this was an increase in cash you would you would add that to the beginning balance of cash before this year and that would give you the ending balance of cash Okay, that's the general idea. Now, this statement of cash flows works pretty well. It generates pretty well. But you probably, if you if you were getting detailed for like external reporting purposes, there could be some transactions that QuickBooks might not pick up exactly well, right? It might not do it properly. Like this, this example, the loan payable, <clears throat> that might not be exactly right. You might export it to Excel and make that change and you can make it fairly easily. If you had more complex transactions, like you took out this loan, but possibly you didn't, you didn't, uh, you didn't get the cash, you took out the loan because you bought equipment with it. So that gets messy because the because the equipment is an investing activity, and the loan uh, is going to be a financing activity. And these two things are kind of combined together. So then you so it might be the case that QuickBooks doesn't properly record those types of transactions same with the sale of in of of uh 
of equipment. It's usually the equipment stuff and the financing stuff that could get messy. Because if you sold equipment, then you usually have a pretty complex transaction related to that as well. Because you're going to have to sell the equipment. So the equipment's going to go down, but you might not have just gotten cash for it. You might have got something other than cash, like a loan for it or something like that. But there's also going to be depreciation involved with the equipment and depreciation is up in the operating activities and then you've got accumulated depreciation that you have to deal with so it's a pretty complex transaction so uh so if you really wanted to hone down your statement of cash flows you might use this as a baseline right and then look into those more complex transactions like sales of equipment and financing activities to see if there's any kind of adjustments that need to be made but it's pretty good in general and again if you look at the at, if, at the at the profit and loss you can get an idea of the similar concept of of a direct method for the income statement by going to the cash this is where that cash button is actually useful you don't try to use the cash and accrual buttons up here to try to make it easier to be on a cash basis versus an accrual basis because what you do is you just follow whatever the concept of your industry is that's best practices. However, once you have your system set up, if you want to then see a cash flow profit and loss, which is kind of like a direct method operating activity of the statement of cash flows, that's the proper use of that button, right? And now I can see basically an income statement. So now I have the best of both worlds really on the statement of cash flows for the operating activities. I've got, in essence, the direct method, which changed all of my accounts top to bottom, gave me my net income on a direct method. Doesn't exactly tie out to what they have here, but it's pretty close and it gives me a pretty good idea. And I still have the indirect method, which is the method typically required for external reporting purposes, at least in the United States. And generally, I think everywhere, why? because the indirect method you can see you have this reconciliation here's the net income that we had on an accrual basis here's the difference see i have the difference to get me the net income on the on the cash basis which is net cash provided by operating activities when i do it this way it makes more intuitive sense but i don't have the reconciliation right i can't see exactly what the difference is between one or the other because i reworked every account so this one I think makes more sense to think intuitively, but this one gives you that nice uh, reconciliation is uh, the general idea.